Hello, uh, welcome to a sunny afternoon from the UK where I'm going to hopefully record a video for you here that uh, ties in with a blog post that I just did about user group policies failing to apply when you're using a profile management tool. And I saw a lot of noise about this on the forums about it happening to people with FS Logics, and I've tested that out and it'll probably happen with other profile management tools provided the set of circumstances is the same. So get straight into it we have here a windows server 2016 instance but we get the same behavior on 2019 and whatnot so i'll just log on to this server here and if i quickly just show you we haven't got Citrix installed or anything like that on here in the interest of keeping it easy because um, whether you've got Citrix installed or not or RDSH installed or Horizon or whatever, you'll still get the same issue if the, 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 the circumstances are correct. So we've got FS Logics apps installed yet yeah, for profile management purposes. So let's just sign that out, flip across to my domain controller. Now this machine sits in this OU here. So our profile container settings for FS Logics, pretty standard in here. Um, standard set of settings that you'd normally expect to find done by JPO. Now, to call out, we also have a JPO configured that configures group policy caching, right? Now, this is a performance enhancement that when your logon is foreground synchronous, which probably happens for quite a lot of your logons out there, depending on what you use it. I've got an article reference from the article this is about that tells you all about processing modes, but it's intended to make it run faster by using cached copies of the JPOs rather than dragging them all from a domain controller. It's not intended to do things in offline situations. That's totally different things. It's intended to make it run faster when it's in foreground synchronous mode. So that's enabled. You may or may not have it enabled in your environments. The fact that I'm calling it out now, you're probably um, thinking, yeah, that's something to do with the problem. Yes, it is. But let's just say for the minute, group policy caching for servers is enabled. We also have configured, just for testing purposes, prevent access to the command prompt. This is scoped to a certain group of users, so our non-admin users shouldn't be able to run a command prompt. That's fairly common in RDSH environments, and that's the JPO we're going to use to test. And there's also another one we're using to test as well, start screen layout. We're enforcing a partially locked custom start screen layout as well. So, without further ado, let's... Um, Sorry, I forgot to call out there as well. That's where our profiles are stored in this folder here called profiles on the domain controller. Obviously your shares probably in lots and lots of different wonderful places. So let's log on as a test user now, not on as an admin user. FS Logics app service starts up and starts creating us a VHDX file, which should be in that folder here. You can see it's been created, just created now. Yep. Yeah. So that's in the process of being created. Now it's applying group policy and whatnot. And the user log on when that's finished processing should finish and present us with the desktop. So now we have arrived at the desktop. One of the first things I do when I'm doing testing like this with profile management tools is just make some slight cosmetic change. So I'm going to get rid of that default server 2016 background change it to just a solid color so i know when i log in next time if my settings have persisted so just a quick tip there and what we should see with group policy being applied is we have this partially locked start layout here you can tell by the little lock icon so we could add more things to that if we wanted and we handily have on there command prompt the command prompt has been disabled now we talked about group policy caching being part of the reason behind this, right? Now, group policy caching only kind of kicks in when a background refresh takes place during the user session. Now, normally most of your users will get a background refresh at some point. It's normally about 45 minutes, an hour, maybe up to two hours after the user's logged in, it'll do a background refresh. Most user sessions last long enough to have one of these take place. Obviously, because we're jumping, logging straight out to see if we can recreate the issue, what we need to do is trigger a background refresh. So we will simply run a group policy update right now, which will do a background refresh. GP updates done from in the session are always done in background processing mode. Ignore that error. That's because I have some very, very old software um, software installation policies that nobody should ever use that I was used for testing something. So don't worry about that. 
So now our group policy settings should have been cached. Yep. So we'll log back out again. And then we'll try and log back in and see what we see the second time around. So there, our logon has finished. Everything that we wanted to save should have been written back to our profile in the VHD store. So if we log back in again, should be a little bit quicker this time to log in. Maybe, maybe not. So you can see this time we've logged in, we've got the black background this time. So that's an indication that the settings that we saved last time have persisted. So let's see what the state of our other, you can see we haven't got our start menu. In fact, our start menu is just kind of appearing in the background, which isn't good. Oops, sorry, I shouldn't have my tweets appearing there. Um, and if we try and run a command prompt, this time we can run one. So we've got a big fat security breach going on here. So what has happened to cause these not to apply? Let's think back to what we said about group policy caching, yeah? So if I log on as an administrator, what I'm going to show you is how group policy caching works. So if we run the registry editor, so if you go to software, Microsoft, scroll down to Windows, current version, group policy, this folder here called data store. Now this is an HKLM hive. If you open up data store, now machine level cache group policies are stored in this machine one, but user level ones are stored in this HKLM hive, which is a really silly way of doing things and stored under the user's SID. That is the SID for my user. You can confirm it by looking in the root zero there. It tells you what the user is. If you look under there, we have a list of group policies that are available for caching. Now, each one of them references to this value file system path, which points to app data local group policy. Now, for this admin user that's not being managed by a profile management tool, if you go into here, you'll see a folder called data store with stuff underneath it. It kind of replicates the sysfall and the policies that are applied. That is your group policy cache, right? So we can only assume that this has also happened for the user that we just configured. But here is the clincher. If we go back to here and back to our profile management, our profile container settings, what many of us use is this, provide redirections XML to customize redirections. So basically, this is to avoid saving things into that profile container that we don't want, like Chrome caches and things like that. Things that bloat it out, use up our storage, you know, take more time to bring down at log on, great big files that we don't need. That's what we do. Now, what most of us do as well is we use some of the ones available out in the community as a starting point. And this is one of them here that I've used as the basis for mine. And that includes this. And as you can see, it is the folder where the cached group policy files go. So let's remove that. And then let's save that. Now that redirections file should be copied down into our FS logics um, user profile every time we log in, right? So we've now changed that. So let's log back in as the user, but let's first of all, just think what's going to happen. Now those folders don't exist in our VHD at the moment, right? So they're not available. So when I log in this time, that registry entry will say, oh yes, you have cached stuff available. Look here for it. The group policy engine will look there for it and it'll go, I can't find them. So what the user needs to do in this case is log back in then do a background refresh so that that is repopulated. Then, because we've changed the redirections.xml file to include that folder, it will then have them available. So as the logon just finishes up here, we are expecting to still have it failed because we still haven't got that stuff available for the user to have access. So if we click on the start menu, this time it's 
done something even weirder. It's used the default one instead. Um, so if we then try and run a command prompt, we should say that it still works. We've still got a security breach going on. So if we look in local app data and look for, first of all, what we're going to check is that the redirections.xml has been properly updated. So we haven't got any group policy in there now. So that will now be being saved. So that's all good. If you look in the group policy folder here, it's empty, right? We don't have a local cache. So if you remember, how do we trigger the local cache? we do a background refresh. This would obviously normally happen in the, the normal sort of progression of a session, but we're forcing it to happen right now. Again, we'll just ignore that link there, uh, link, that error there. Now we can see we have stuff cached. So this time, if I then sign out, Now we're going to try and sign back in again. This time, hopefully, let's see what we've got here now. I have my shortcuts back on my start tiles and my command prompt is disabled again. My GPOs are now applying. Brilliant, yeah? Now, one more thing. One more thing. So if we look in this user's session now, we have cache group policies, yeah? But what would happen if I deleted that user's profile? I mean, it happens, yeah? Imagine you've got 100 servers in your Cirix farm, your RDSH farm, whatever, yeah? And your user's logged on to, I don't know, half of them. And then you delete his profile from the central location. Half of those servers, or more, have got that registry key in that says, when you log on, look in this area of the profile and use these cache JPOs. So if you look here, as I say, this is all working hunky-dory at the moment, yeah? Can't run a command prompt, can't do that. So then if I go in here, obviously because there's only one server we're using here, so it's very easy to replicate it being on all servers. I was going to try deleting the user's profile, but perhaps I'd better log out first, you would think. So log the user out, yeah. Delete his profile. Log the user back in. I think the group policy is going to fail to apply again. Until I log out, until I do, sorry, I do a GP update, then log out and log back in. And if that's true, what you really need to do is, at some point, be removing these keys. Now, if you're using PVS, you can easily remove these keys, yeah, because make sure they're not in your golden image, reboot the server, and they're gone. Yeah, you won't be getting any group policy caching benefits for your first logon for your users, but so be it. It's better than no group policies applying at all. Um, the other way to do it is you could put some sort of shutdown script to go through and delete all of the SID entries from under there. That would be another possibility to get around this. But either way... Those entries in HKLM, those user SIDs, in a Citrixy, RDSH, whatever environment where you've got multi users hitting multiple devices, you know, across a lot of devices, it really, really, really doesn't make it behave particularly well at all. In fact, you're literally just stone up problems. Here we've got a user logged on again. So what are we going to find? Is it there we go? Our start menu. Has gone back to the default one and our command prompt runs our group policies have stopped applying when we've deleted the profile essentially what you need to do when you delete the user's profile is not just delete the profile and this feels almost like back in the windows uh windows seven days when they first introduced that profile list key in the registry you don't just have to delete their profile you will have to actually go in and remove that key with the cache group policies completely i think i'm kind of maybe convincing myself that this caching of group policies is nothing but a god awful pain in the backside um fortunately yeah that's the one for my user you can obviously test by going in there jrank and yeah delete yes so now if i log out 
and log back in. I'm sick of logging out and back in now. You should see a new user with a blank profile goes back to where we started, which is obviously having the right settings. And let's just quickly confirm this for the last time. We don't want to end on an error. Just let it create a new profile again. You can see in there it already has done. Apply the group policy objects, whatnot. Let's have a look. This time we have our proper stuff applying there. So there you go. So lessons to be learned from this. Um, either turn off caching if you don't want the benefits from it. Arguably, it's such a pain in the backside. I would suggest that maybe, you know, you don't want it on. But if you do have it on, if you can't get it turned off, then make sure whatever profile management tool you're using, whether that's UPM, FS Logics, whatever, excludes the... I don't even know why I'm showing it here, because I've already taken it out. It doesn't have in this entry here. So make sure you are not excluding this folder and you should be good um hopefully that's going to be helpful to some of you out there and it's a good accompaniment to that blog post i did um so yeah go with that and you should avoid this issue thank you